Hey everybody, welcome back to another session. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, happy 1111 Portal to you. Uh, I am coming through, ooh, I am coming through with an 1111 Portal reading, collective reading. Um, we're starting this on Patreon, but I do feel like this is uh, really for the greater collective ultimately. So I'm channeling it and posting it first on Patreon. And then I believe most likely I'm going to be um, putting it out on YouTube at some point. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now, then please know that Patreon did get access to this session, this reading first. Um, if you'd like to join Patreon, I highly recommend you do so. Information is down in the description box below. But we are going to be talking about this 1111 portal and the energies therein. Woo! That was a honeybee. The energies therein. Um, this is feeling like a very strong portal, a very strong access point is what I'm being told. Um, and so this is being recorded on November 11th, 2023, 1111. Uh, but these energies will still be applicable. They will still apply future in the future later on down the road okay um ooh, honeybee uh so the honeybees have been pollinating my my garden a lot lately i love it um that is a symbol of community yes i will definitely be posting this on youtube later um so tension Tension is in the air. That is what I'm really feeling for the collective right now. But it is very subtle. It's a very subtle form of tension. There's a lot of Plutonic and Mars type energy involved with this situa situation right now. Um, and it also involves the South Node. So I, I did look at the chart because I really wanted to get an understanding from the cosmic side of this situation as to why I'm feeling these energies. Now, when I say I th that tension is in the air, what I mean is that, yes, there is tension, but it's a subtle form of tension. It does feel very adult, very grown, um, very wise, very experienced. You know, I, it feels like, collectively speaking, we have gotten a certain, we have gained a certain level of understanding of how to use aggressive energies and the um, attention that is needed when using or working through working with these aggressive energies because of how wildly they can go out of out of whack. I'm getting a lot of fire energy, okay? Um, even though Pluto is associated with Scorpio and Scorpio is a water sign, there's still intense intent behind what I'm feeling here. And that's really what's causing this tension. Um, now, technically speaking, what's causing this tension, what's causing this drive is partially starting with the moon conjunct the south node, um, which is then squaring with Pluto. Now the moon and the south node are in Virgo. Pluto is in Sagittarius. This is constellational astrology, also known as true sidereal astrology. This is not tropical, Vedic, or even traditional sidereal astrology, okay? This is constellational, true sidereal astrology. Um, the moon is conjuncting with the south node in Virgo, and Virgo is giving an energy of needing to clean up, needing to clear space, I'm hearing specifically, needing to heal from, needing to learn lessons from um, the past with this conjunction between the south node and the moon. So your subconscious energy is highly influenced by the south node at this time as we're going through this portal, which is bringing, bringing up a lot of energies surrounding needing to heal the, the past, needing to clear the past, needing to separate from south node energies, needing to close the door on south node circumstances and situations and or situationships in favor of moving towards your more north node energies. Now, ironically enough, the north node is not aspected at all in this time period at this moment, which is really funny. So the heavy influence, the heavy introspective energy is focused towards the past and south node circumstances and closing those energies out. Okay, uh, uh, now what is driving, partially driving this is Pluto. 
being in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a highly expansive energy, is an energy about higher learning, higher wisdom, exploring new frontiers, unseen places, unknown things, um, and learning from them, gaining higher insight, gaining higher wisdom and knowledge. Uh, this could even be attaining a level of priesthood, if you will, if you're going so far as that on your spiritual journey. With Pluto being there especially, Pluto is a very powerful energy, power-driven energy. So th it's like there's an infusion of raw power in the realm of higher understanding, higher will. Um, and with this square between the south node and the moon, which is making your subconscious mind more susceptible to the past and your south node aspects using the energy of this square with pluto which is creating a circumstance in which you now have the opportunity to rise above something or to overcome something in a brand new way pluto is providing that raw power within the realm of sagittarius which is allowing for greater expansive vision and higher wisdom and uh, now that is squaring up with the moon and the south node. Anything that you have from your past south node energies, past relationships, cycles, and circles that you've been wanting to close out, now have, you now have a greater opportunity to close them out with this infusion of raw power from Pluto. One second. Okay, now the next part of this. The sun is conjuncting with Mars at this time. And this is opposing Uranus in Libra. No, I'm sorry, Uranus is in Aries, but uh, the Sun and Mars are conjunct in Libra. I, I'm feeling with this, first of all, in this time period of moving through this 1111 portal, there is an emphasis on action, an emphasis, a focus on uh, your action, uh, your forward movement, how you are, um, I don't wanna, I, we could say, you could say fighting back, but you could also say how you are standing up to the challenges that you are faced in your life, um, the actions that you are taking towards or in terms of uh, overcoming these challenges, um, any way, any, the actions that you're taking to um, uh, manifest your dreams or, or uh, move through your healing process or move through your ascension journey, right? This is the action, action oriented or oriented energy focus because the sun and mars are conjuncting now okay so the sun being your soul your spirit your your inner light your higher self mars being the god of war or the the action taker the uh the warrior the fighter the doer okay um <clears throat> this is very personal with mars and the sun co going conjunct here i do feel like not only is your action focused as your action orientation in focus, how you're taking action in focus, but also what your soul wants, what your soul wants to achieve. Um, this could be a time in which maybe your ego is being overshadowed right now by your soul. And instead of um, taking action from an egoic point of view, you are now being influenced, you are getting guidance, you are seeing ways that you could take action in terms of what your soul is guiding you towards, okay? Now, what's helping to amplify this feeling here is the fact that the sun and the mar the sun and mars who are conjunct are opposing uranus who has retrograded back into aries at this point okay so now all of the ways that uranus has been influencing this change in self this personal revolution this personal evolution over the last three years at this point while Uranus was making his primary transit through Aries that has been and if you've been following me for the, at least the last three years because it's really been since I moved to Puerto Rico that I've been talking about this concept but the fact that Uranus has been transiting through Aries and influencing a huge revolution in terms of our sense of self which has also subsequently helped us move more into the focus of our north node energies our north node path so what's happening as we're moving through this 1111 portal at this time is that we are really gaining the raw power to gain the wisdom and the insight to overcome a lot of these south node challenges that we may have felt stuck within okay 
Now, one last minor thing. Well, let me say this first. The Sun and Mars conjunction in Libra. Libra is helping to build or, or provide a sense of need for balance, um, a need for leveling, leveling the playing field, paying up, car paying karmic debt. I am specifically hearing owning up to karmic debt or maybe owning up to situations and or circumstances that have left you with or provided you with karmic debt. A lot of that for the, for the collective I'm feeling is being so heavily involved still in South Node energies while full, all full while knowing, fully the whole time, full while knowing you are supposed to be North Node oriented. And it's not necessarily that whatever it is you're involved with in the South Node energies for you are all that or are intrinsic bad and yet you are still receiving negative karma for it the only reason you're receiving that negative karma is because you know your orientation is in the wrong place and yet you fail to choose to take the steps to do anything about it that's quite literally the only reason why you would be getting karmic uh, backlash in these not so necessarily wrong circumstances the only thing that makes them wrong is the fact that they are wrong for you at this time that is what I'm specifically hearing okay that is a channeled message for somebody quite frankly, quite literally a group of people because this is going to be on YouTube later, okay? So, all right, take it as it resonates. Now, last thing that I want to say, it's kind of a, major, a minor aspect to this situation and yet I still feel like it's heavily influencing things here or it's being influenced, actually, I want to say, because it involves Mercury, which is just, which is now, as of the 11th of November, 2023, 11-11, Mercury is making his way through the very beginning of Scorpio. Uh, and why is that important? Or why do I feel like this is being influenced? I don't feel like this is influencing the situation. I think this is being influenced. The fact that Mercury is moving now into Scorpio, leaving Libra, where we had a very justice-oriented mindset, to now being in Scorpio, which is all about transformation, okay? Um, I feel like this is being affected by Pluto which is, which is squaring up with the moon in the south node. So it feels like there is extra drive. There is extra heavy emphasis. I feel like there is a bunch of extra pressure being put on Mercury by him entering into Scorpio while Pluto is being squared up, whilst Pluto is squaring up with your south node. It's causing you to think differently or maybe it's forcing or causing you or influencing you to want to think differently. And this is also one of those aspects where I feel like the tension is coming in because this is, this is a very tense energy. This is a very action-oriented energy. It's like, okay, what do I do now? What can I do to help this process along? There is a sense of urgency. All of this urgent energy, though, it feels like it's coming from Uranus, who is opposing the sun. And, well, who is opposing the Sun and Mars, who are conjunct. Yes. It's not necessarily that you need to do anything about it. I feel like it's more of, it, this is more of an intellectual time, I want to say. Is that what it feels like? And, and it, it does feel like a very tense time in which you may want to, you may feel like you need to like sit down and meditate extra just because the energies are so intense, are so high vibe. Uh, Uranus is really influxing, influencing, putting in a really high vibe energy while Pluto is, is, in, is um, investing raw power, high amounts of raw power. To get this job done there is a lot of that so that makes sense as to why this could be a pretty tense and whew, anxious time period all right i'm gonna get into some cards now we and i got some new cards yay i got some new tarot cards i love them using we're gonna start with my favorite oracle deck uh we have <laughs> path to plenty at the bottom of the deck right now you will have no problems getting what you need in life you will be given more than enough this is what landed on the deck after i had used it a bit earlier um and I wanted to show that to the collective because it felt applicable, but I also want to light some sage real quick just to get a bit of a reset. Um, you know, 
I am being instructed and guided to start with the tarot first. This is one of my new decks. This is the black and gold deck. I'm liking it, I'm loving it. It's beautiful. Do you have the Eight of Swords at the bottom of the deck? Do not take that one. Okay. So, let me just. All right, y'all. We're going to get into this. Pull some cards, get some messages for this. 11 11 portal. Yes. All right, I'm gonna give this five shuffles here. Okay, so here's a tidbit. If this was normal on Patreon, I most likely would have let that play as it went by. It's, they were playing music, it got stuck in traffic, and so it kind of got caught up. But this is gonna end up on YouTube later, so copyright. <laughs> but anyway, let's give this five shuffles, yeah? Show us the messages we need to see, hear, and know for this 1111 portal, please, spirit. Show us the five shuffles, so that's two messages for this 1111 portal. Three. Messages for the 1111 portal. This is last one, five. We have the moon. And the Two of Swords. The moon is showing up reversed in this moment. The moon and the Two of Swords. Illusions are breaking. In this Two of Swords here, you see, there looks like what could be like some sort of glass or something. You see how it's cracking? I feel, I feel like that's, it's shattering. Illusions are shattering, especially with the moon in reverse. I'm getting that um, there are certain illusions, there are certain delusional ways you may be treating yourself that um, cannot be sustained any longer. This could either be you or it could be some people around you. Like you could be noticing this with, with people around you. Like they can't keep up their stories. Ways that they may be deluding themselves may come to light. I'm hearing shedding tears. But the, the strongest feeling that I'm getting here, oh, see now, see now it's upright, but the, it was originally like this. The strongest thing that I'm getting here, um, yes, because it was upright in the past, so you were able to hold these delusions, illusions of grandeur maybe even, together. But now the moon is reversed. It's like you can't hide from something any longer. The, the cracks are starting to show. Last shuffle. It's five. I'm here, I'm really getting, yes, yeah, see the moon is staying at the bottom of the deck. I'm really getting um, ways you may be, way, ways you may have been deluding yourself. Deluding yourself. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Got it done. Boop. All right. Here we go. The, the devil is the first card out, y'all. The Ten of Cups and the Three of Pentacles. At the root of the situation, we've got the Three of Swords. And crowning us, we have the Ace of Cups. Look at that. All right. I really like in this deck, this is the black and gold deck, I really like the Three of Pentacles because it's depicted as these three pentacles creating a key. And this tells me that you can create a key or acquire a key to something quite easily for any lock. This kind of feels like a skeleton key. If you're not familiar with what that is, a skeleton key is a key that can get that can open any lock in the house or any lock in existence. It's a, it's a it's a universal key. It can open anything. That's kind of the energy that I'm getting from this. This feels strongly like a lesson. In this situation, it feels like the devil here is. Um, it feels like the devil here is teaching us a lesson in this situation somehow well, i'm here i just heard mentorship <laughs> it's a mentorship 
okay? Uh, with that, you in the center of everything, you have the Ten of Cups. Oh, the true lesson that I'm getting here is I feel like you're learning about what the true Ten of Cups means to you. you uh, it, you're learning about what having the Ten of Cups truly means. All of that emotional fulfillment, all of that wish fulfillment. You can see the Ten of Cups as somewhat of a wish fulfillment card, especially on an emotional level. You're gaining the keys to this. I'm getting like going through trials and tribulations. Maybe if you have some sort of romantic relationship going on in your life right now, you are gaining wisdom and knowledge to keep the relationship going. I'm hearing for some of you, you're learning how to build a relationship. And again, what that actually means, what it actually entails. I'm getting from the devil and the Ten of Cups. I'm getting the devils in the details. There is definitely something about higher learning here. That's what I'm getting with the Three of Pentacles, which is showing up as, in this deck, is a key, represented as a key. I'm, you're learning how to access this, maybe the best ways, or you could say best practice in terms of accessing this. Knowing what it feels like, knowing what it takes to get through the trials and the tribulations because also it's like feeling like an energy of like the devil will try to stop you. Maybe even the devil will try to distract you with like these friggin' mosquitoes I'm dealing with. Them skaters! Right? I want to get into some clarification. I'm going to be using my other, my second new deck. The dark purple deck. Justice is at the bottom of it. See, justice is a big aspect right now. Because even though, because yes, Mercury has moved from Libra into Scorpio by, by now, but we still have the Sun and Mars conjuncting in Libra. Justice is a big universal aspect to this situation right now, okay? The need for justice, the need for the balancing of the scales. And what I have, what I want to say next is, rooting at the root of all this is the three of swords so you are learning from this pain this could be previous situations that you are gaining the wisdom and the knowledge from right now i want to give this five shuffles because i want to get some clarity on this and this could be a very well it probably is a very personal process because remember crowning us overall energy at the bottom of the deck here is the ace of cups all right, it's two. So just some clarity here, some understanding. Three. Clarity, please, spirit. Four. Oh. I felt something tickling my arm in a steady manner. I was like, who is that? Antoline, <laughs> my avocado tree. This is five. All right, um, clarity, understanding. I really, I want to start with this Ten of Cups here. I want to help us understand what is this Ten of Cups? What does this Ten of Cups represent? Look at what's at the bottom of our clarifying deck to start. The Nine of Pentacles. We've been talking about this Nine of Pentacles a lot lately about getting into this nine of pentacles energy so okay already i have a deeper understanding of this so this is about facing the tough life lessons that you have needed to face all along there is a level of procrastination here don't get it twisted don't worry about it you are right where you need to be at this time okay but also because of that procrastination, you see that procrastination side note has served a purpose because now there is a sense of urgency. Now you really want to get this going. And it may even feel like you have this deadline to meet. There really, that's not the case. It's more about getting up and getting the job done, doing the work. What is that work? Facing the hard lessons. I told you the devil is a mentor here in this circumstance. So 
all the toxic situations that you've been through, all the ways that you feel used, abused, abandoned, taken advantage of, um, all the ways that you have been triggered, all the toxic energies that you have been, and, and toxic cycles, and maybe even toxic habits, belief system, what, ways that you have, all of that has been a lesson, has been a mentor for you in showing you just what it means to be in this Ten of Cups energy. Because it really does feel like there's a, a strong sense, an intense sense of vulnerability in this Ten of Cups energy. Because when you're coming from a strictly, purely emotional place, there really is no logical sense there. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It be noisy down here. Okay, anyway, um, I, if you don't know, I recently moved from the mountains down to closer to sea level, down to town, and so it's much noisier here. Anyway, um, but no chickens. Well, there are chickens, but they're not the issue anymore, so that's what, that I can deal with. Anyway, well, it's really both the chicken, the roosters. Anyway, <laughs> what I was saying was, what we're learning here is that in all this emotional abundance, there really is no stability there is no logic okay emotional emotions are not logical or not rational okay they are what they are and they flow and they turn and they can twist up in a second like and this is a this is a very vulnerable place to be this ten of cups doesn't mean it's bad you just have to recognize how vulnerable you are how susceptible you are to devilish toxic dark low vibrational energies coming in and using you from this place of emotional vulnerability because you're just so open and giving of yourself, right? Which is, again, not a bad thing. But that's exactly what we were saying. Because if you've been following for a while, especially here on Patreon, you know that the struggle has been to go from the Nine of Cups energy to get into the Nine of Pentacles energy. Why is that? Why can't we, I'm already at the Nine, why can't I just go to the Ten? of cups i'm at the nine of cups why can't i go to the ten of cups and the answer to that was don't you remember how that turned out having all the emotional fulfillment but none of the stability none of the steadfastness none of the permanence none of the actual maybe in some cases none of the actual truth no real re reality aspects to this all nothing but a f but fancy fanciful fantasy when you really think about it, no grounding, grounded aspects to it, just pure emotional fulfillment. Don't you remember how that turned out? Didn't necessarily turn out all that good anymore, does it? Or did it? Hmm. So that's why instead of staying in the nine of cups energy to then reach the 10, I, wow, ironically enough, okay, this is why we have the ace of cups crowning us here. Because technically, we are waiting, we are in the Nine of Cups energy, which is not bad, okay? The Nine of Cups is a comfort zone. It is a place of emotional maturity, at least in this situation, this is what I'm feeling for the collective. This is a place of healing. You've found healing. You've found some, some level of emotional contentment, emotional wish fulfillment, happiness, comfort. Feeling better about yourself now than you did ever did ages years ago, maybe even last year. You know that this is a very good healing place, but this ultimately was not the ultimate desired result. This was just a checkpoint. Okay, you made it through the healing aspect. Now, let's start really working towards what it is we truly want. And what it is we truly want is that which is in the physical, is is committed, is is permanent is um something we can physically build and you know it has a tangible aspect to it it has solidity it has grounding it has foundation it doesn't mean it doesn't have any love at all it does it definitely has love but it also has stability and that is why we are tr needing to switch or trying collectively speaking trying to switch working on switching from the nine of cups that comfort zone to the nine of pentacles AKA going to the gym to get slim and trim so that, or, and fit so that you can fit into that gown, that dress or that suit to go to that specific party. What's that specific party? Your 10 of pentacles. Make sense? So this is why we also have our crown with the ace of cups because we're looking for that ace to take us to the 10. But that ace is coming from the devil in most cases. 
And I'm even getting, there are conditions to that in some cases for some of you. And there's the... Okay. Okay. This is really about self-reflection. This is really about understanding your emotions. I mean, all I, I'm looking at the story here at, at the bottom of the deck, and this is telling me, because this Ace of Cups here is crowning us in this situation, and I keep hearing we're overthinking. But we are thinking, we are overthinking. Okay, uh, overthinking because you're trying to get away with something, with an aspect you know you should have let go of eons or ages ago for some. Okay, if that hits you in a specific way, take it as it resonates. Um, I keep hearing overthinking. We're overthinking. I'm hearing it really is just that simple. Okay, that I'm overthinking. All right. It really is just that simple. Um, you're thinking about that offer that would be made to you and what it would bring to you or what, had, what it has brought you in the past. And through all of this, you are gaining the keys to unlock your Ten of Pentacles through the pain that you've experienced, the Three of Swords. I was overthinking. <laughs> and so clarifying things, we have the Nine of Pentacles. Overall, this is what we're trying to get into. We're really working on, Three of Pentacles also represents working on oneself. We're really working on gaining the wisdom, gaining the knowledge, doing the self-work, reconstructing ourselves in order to gain this wisdom, this understanding. The, the devil in this energy may also even be representing that drive that we feel. There could be, because it does feel like does feel a little bit toxic. I know I was dealing with it myself and I really needed to like calm myself down. I, I noticed I am an Aries, but, <laughs> um, and so Mars being aspected like this would really hit, hit me, uh, make me feel some type of way potentially. So, but the devil here does feel like almost a forceful energy of really wanting to get through this, needing to be, almost being obsessed with completing this. There is a bit of an obsession energy to gain the key of wisdom, to gain the knowledge from this situation and circumstance so you can move on from it. Show me the Ten of Cups, please, for the collective. Woo! Aha, uh -huh. the High Priestess is the first card. Show me the Ten of Cups. The Six of Swords, yes. Show me the Ten of Cups. Wow, the King of Swords. Oh! the lovers and the king of pentacles reversed look at that with the moon at the bottom of the deck this is illusions definitely illusions of grandeur secrets secrets I, I get for some of you you've been hiding some secrets from yourself secrets of what you truly wanted or how you truly felt about something inside Oh, <laughs> it was right there. I missed it. I have to go back in the playback. But did you see that bird? Um, messages from your higher self. There is definitely an energy here of settling down. I'm getting a, a very strong choice is being made with this Ten of Cups energy. It's what you do not want to entertain anymore, is what I just heard. High Priestess to the Six of Swords to the King of Swords. The unit, first of all, the universe is guiding you here. This is definitely divinely orchestrated. That bird was a symbol of that. That bird was a symbol of your higher self, uh, your, also your subconscious, because the bird was black, um, I believe. Your subconscious, your higher self, higher realms, you're having access, you have access to higher realms, ascended masters, your higher self is coming down 
to aid you with this, to lead you through this circumstance. Okay, Six of Swords to the High Priestess. You're definitely getting divine guidance. But you are standing in this situation and riding this ship of movement forward um, as the King of Swords, or at least you're needing to ride the wave as, or ride the boat. I'm really seeing, literally seeing the image of someone riding down a river. It's nighttime. It's fairly calm. Um, uh, uh, the motor or the the individual driving the boat is the high priestess the universe your higher self okay um while you are at the head of the boat three four five six you are at the head of the boat as the king of swords looking objectively at what it is you are going through what it is you are seeing before you and allowing your higher self your intuition to guide you in terms of ways of understanding it or gaining the lessons the wisdom hearing the messages that it has for you in terms of your relationship to these situations and thus you're making some higher awareness decisions on what I'm getting what I'm getting next with the lovers and the king of pentacles the king of pentacles being reversed what aspects you will no longer take part of in your life is what I'm hearing as you're fitting into this king of pentacles energy it feels like there feels uh, this is a message that's been coming through in the patreon collective also there is a feeling here of domestic domestication wanting to settle down wanting to get married wanting to have a family wanting to have kids or something some semblance of that but in this situation ultimately what this is saying because this is clarifying the ten of cups all that emotion all that ushy gushy is not going to lead you to that stability to that family to that home to that marriage to those kids like you know what i mean that ten of cups could not sustain it there is no stability but you can take that, those ten cups and take it to your nine of pentacles, your garden, so that, or even your ten of pentacles. This is where the love comes in to the situation. Use that ten of cups energy to water your ten of pentacles, your field of plenty. So... Ideally, then, take that Nine of Cups energy that you have, that you're, we're working on moving away from, and water your Nine of Pentacles space with it. Let's look at the Devil next. Show me the Devil for the Collective, please. Ooh, the Tower is the first card out. Show me the Devil. For the collectors, it's 11, 11, Uh-oh. That was thrown. The Three of Wands reversed. Uh, this is giving me an energy of no longer investing in something with the Tower. The Tower, the Three of Wands reversed. This could be a previous aspect to yourself. Whatever the devil represents, whatever circumstances, contracts, this could be South Node conditioning, this could be South Node aspects. Um, like what we were saying some things that you're uh, associated with from your past aren't necessarily bad or are not intrinsically bad however they are not in, in alignment for you and so you're realizing that you have to stop investing in them the tower to the three of wands reversed show me the devil okay oh yeah that makes sense overall energy is the five of cups um Okay, in the gold, in the black and gold deck, this other new deck that I got, that five of cups is depicted as those five cups propping up a bridge. The th the the three cups that are sp have spilt are are face down. Okay, but they provide most of the construction for that bridge. The other two cups provide that extra boost, but it's those three cups that provide most of the solid structure. Well, all of the solid structure, all of the base for that bridge to stand it's like an arching bridge and you have you start with one cup turn oh, uh, upside down then one cup up another down and up and down and those three downward facing cups provide the actual stability for that bridge for you to get over it to for you to move on to the next and that's not how this is depicted depicted in this deck but my uh, I, I remembered that so i wanted to share it oh whoops Oh, oh, right. It's the other card that came out. Okay. Um, damn.
Damn, y'all. Oh my god. So, death too. Oh shit. Um, this, so then we also have with this, like we're, we're clarifying the devil. We have the tower to the three of wands reversed. Some people don't want to let go of this investment. Some people are going to give you hell or throw a fit because you're no longer investing. Then you have the Knight of Pentacles reversed and the Ten of Cups. This Ten... What I'm getting with the Knight of Pentacles reversed and the Ten of Cups here is that you're never going to be able to grow anything in this situation because there just isn't enough land to absorb all this water, all this emotion. It will get completely drowned out. In some cases, the, the land, whatever land mass you do have would completely dissolve in all of this water. Knight of Pentacles reversed because what I'm thinking of the Knight of Pentacles is traditionally depicted as this Knight, of Pen Knight holding a pentacle on his horse and behind him are tilled fields ready to be planted, ready to be invested in, ready for action to be taken, ready for something to be done with it. And ultimately, there just isn't enough stability here. That's the problem. There just isn't enough stability here to get anything really truly off the ground. Something of value, something worth sacrificing for, I'm hearing. And so, with great sorrow, Five of Cups, we do have a transformation. The deck split to death. And, damn, death and the Two of Swords. So this is actually, collectively speaking, this is an energy of coming out of denial. As well as just transforming, okay? Five of Cups, Two of Pentacles. You know, for some of you, um, this Ten of Cups energy here was very manipulative. If it, in love, this is quite literally, this is, if we're, this is quite literally, specifically speaking to having options in love, manifesting it that way. You have the Five of Cups, and then you have the Two of Pentacles to the Magician, to the Ace of Cups, to the Three of Cups, to the King of Wands, to the Ace of Swords, to the Emperor. There is an energy here of growing up, of either all you were getting when you were when you were approaching your like if this is love for you okay if you were approaching love from a nine of cups space basically all you were going to get was nine of cups back even if that's not intentionally what you wanted but that's what was going to show up for you that was going to be that's what was going to be mirrored in your life cycle king of wands ace of, ace of swords there so Yes, to the Emperor, to Temperance. Um, there is definitely an, an energy here of growing up. Or becoming clear. Being, and I said this earlier in the reading. Being honest with yourself about how it is you have been taking action in some circumstances. And whether that be reconciling with yourself if need be. Or just doing, continuing to do what it takes and or do both. Or both. Reconciling and then starting to and continuing to continuing to do what it takes that is necessary to move in the direction that you're meant to be going in this is how you're gaining the key here the keys to open any of those locks the skeleton key if you will in some cases show us this three of pentacles please spirit Eight of Swords. Okay, show us the Three of Pentacles. Now, <laughs> Nine of Cups. Can't make it up. Can't make it up. Nine of Cups. Show us the Three of Pentacles, please. The Five of Pentacles is the overall energy. I'm sorry, no, it's the last card. And then the overall energy is the Two of Swords. I am, I am going to be 100% and completely honest with you guys. All of this, this procrastination happened, I'm hearing, because of feelings of insecurity or not feeling worthy enough, not feeling enough, not feeling like enough. 
Eight of Swords, Nine of Cups, Five of Pentacles. So if this is not necessarily a place that you've come to that is of healing, this Nine of Cups, this is ultimately going to be about to become a healing place for you. And it may be so triggering for you that you may not want to come back here again. Okay, you did have the tower in that devil, clarifying that devil energy. Okay, um, some of you are about to be rocked or have been or are being rocked out of your comfort zone now. Because for some of you here, you have gotten to a really nice cozy place, sure. But you have remained in that cozy place because still, of, still feeling a bit inadequate not feeling like enough not feeling like you're good enough so it really kind of feels like in this nine of cups energy you may have kind of given in to those beliefs well i'm not good enough anyway well i'm not good enough anyway so i might as well just stay here and i might as well just get comfortable here is what this is feeling like but you are good enough and this tower energy surrounding the devil it doesn't have to be extreme for everyone. It could just be the realization or figuring out or understanding it and being able to t dismantle the situation, okay? It doesn't have to be a catastrophic thing. It technically is just talking about this, d the dismantling, the no longer putting investment or no longer investing time, attention, and energy into this situation, and, all and then ultimately, subsequently, the dismantling of it. That's what the tower represents. But what, how you are gaining this key to unlock this gate, this doorway, is by recognizing how you have perpetuated it yourself in some cases, Eight of Swords. And originally when the Eight of Swords came out, I saw the depiction that the black and gold tarot has it as, and it's a spider web. The web we weave for ourselves. That safety net almost is definitely coming through there. That, that web is a literally a safety net for that spider. And that spider built that web itself. So that spider put the conditions of that safety net into the web themselves, his or herself. So how are we any different in the spider webs, in the safety nets that we create for ourselves mentally? And remember, what creates your reality? Your mind and your beliefs. quite literally, your mental safety net, which also helps to provide a framework for your emotional safety net, which also helps to provide a framework for your physical safety net, right? This is how you have blinded yourself to it. This Two of Swords is giving me energies of no longer, yep, Two of Swords to death. No longer being in denial, no longer being blinded to this. by this. I am seeing the sun, but the next is uh, the chariot. I am seeing the sun in my head. Two of swords, death to the chariot. This is getting you into gear. And that's really kind of the aggressive energy or the um, anxious energy, the need for speed, the need to drive forward. That's also a, a source of this tension, okay? Getting out of this denial, going through this transformation and really wanting to be eager to move forward. So I will say that whomever is resonating with this situation right now, this 1111 portal is 1111 11, 11 portaling, okay? <laughs> it's doing the damn thing is what I'm trying to say. This 1111 portal is 1111 portaling. <laughs> Let's get some closing oracle guidance here. Path to Plenty is still at the bottom of the deck. Just wanted to shout that out. Five shuffles again, one. Whew, closing oracle messages for this 1111 portal. Three. Four. Woo! These cards are really eager to speak to the collective. This is five. All right. What messages do you have for us for this 1111 portal? Look, we're starting out with Path to Plenty. It's still at the bottom of the deck. Underneath that is divine vision, an unlikely source. Good choices, expect a positive outcome from good choices you have made in the past, and then small steps, and door to power. 
Okay. What messages do you have for us for this 11.11 portal? What do you want us to know? Huh. What do you want us to know? Woo! Woo! Uh, I'm hearing divine timing is at hand. Wow. Okay, and then overall energy 1111 portal walking unscathed. You are fortunate. A trap was laid out for you, but you were too smart to fall for it. Who do you think laid that trap, y'all? Hmm? This guy. This was the trap. I've overcome it. Next level is your first card out. It did come out in reverse. If you leave your comfort zone, you will see accelerated growth and change. But guys, next level came out reversed. And what were we talking about here this whole time? Leaving this comfort zone. Nine of cups, eight of swords, nine of cups, but leaving the comfort zone. The key, the key, the key to this, the key to getting to the next level, the key to unlocking this doorway, this gate, whatever it is you've been holding, your, you've been holding yourself back with. Yes, I said that correctly. Whatever it is you've been holding yourself back with because you are really the only person that erected that gate or put that doorway between you. But okay, that barrier. Can you leave that comfort zone? That's how you get to the next level. That's how you get the key. Leaving the comfort zone. This does feel like a past energy because I do feel like we are, you are doing this. The next card you have is Ascension. But what I'm getting with next level here is in reverse mainly is this is the understanding as to why you have not been able to reach that next level yet. Which then takes you to Ascension. You are shifting from one reality to a higher vibrational reality. Time to soar to new heights. And then finally, you have inner warrior. Channel your inner strength to subdue and subtly control the issues at hand. Trust your power, your power to move beyond this comfort zone. So it feels like everything we have been talking about over the last month and a half, I want to say, especially here on Patreon, is culminating in this 1111 portal in some ways, shapes or forms. I like that a lot. I really, really do. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was truly helpful for you. And if you are catching this on YouTube, um, I hope this helps. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into what we've got going on in the Patreon Collective. And this really, if this really vibed with you, I highly recommend, highly suggest you join us over on Patreon. It's great. We have a lot of fun there and we work through all of this stuff on a regular basis. So get on the bus. Yes, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link can be found in the description box below. I love you all. Happy 11-11 portal. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Bye. <laughs>